All right, we're in another one of those sections that I would consider optional. Um, the I think you'll understand the ideas that I'm going over here in 7.6 A and B, but um, it's pretty hard. The word problems here are pretty hard. So I would not assign this typically, but if you want to see it, we're going to take you through it. So it's going to begin with kind of a review of how you graph a trig function, which we've already seen. Um, so let me just kind of refresh your memory on this. We're going to graph a trig function here. We're going to talk about all the different transformations. And the way I would have taught this to you is I would want you to pull out that 4. And so I'm going to take, I'm pulling it out like it's a GCF. Now I've got a whole video on this again, but this is going to make it, if you pull it out, a GCF of something that doesn't really need it pulled out, you're, you're dividing it away. So this is going to make pi over 8. Okay, now the reason I like it in this form is if you just have this, you'll know all the transformations that we've previously studied and you won't have any trouble. So 2 here is called the amplitude, but it's really just a vertical stretch. So our amplitude is 2. The 4 here is the value that helps us find pi, uh, the period. So you take 2 pi, divide it by that 4, and so we'd have pi over 2. Now, this is just nothing more than a horizontal, um, so inside with the x, it's a stretch or compression, but it goes, on the inside, it goes the opposite of what you would think. If you're multiplying by 4, you're actually dividing by 4, so you're compressing if you multiply by 4. It goes backwards what you would think it would be. We've also got a horizontal shift to the right. Remember how it's built with a minus for pi over 8, and we're going to go up 2. Now, this is just asking us to build that one step at a time. So here we start with the original function. This is just the sine function. We multiply it, the, the amplitude increase to 2. Then we're compressing it by that factor of 4 because it's the inside there is that 4 and it's the opposite of what you would think. Uh, then we've shifted it to the right by pi over 2. Uh, pi over 2, did I do that wrong? Oh yeah, sorry, hold on. We should have been dividing. Oh no, no, here it is, pi over 2. Yeah, that's right, okay. Oh yeah, they don't have it written the way I do. I was like, what's happening here? Yeah, no, the shift here is pi over 8, so they don't, they're not showing it with like this because they didn't pull out the 4. But So the shift here would be pi over 8, and that's all we need. Okay, so let's go again, finding the amplitude and the period of the following function. So here on A, my amplitude is 2. So my period is going to be 2 pi divided by that number in front of the x. It's going to be 1 fourth. It's going to be keep change flip. It's going to make it pi over 8. <coughs> um, and they do want us to graph it, so I'll let them help us with this. So we've got our amplitude here up to 2. We've now made our period 8 pi. And I would just leave it as, a, like, you don't need to be any more precise than that. That would do for me. Okay, now we've got this graph here. If I was going to graph this, um, so first of all, it's got an amplitude of 3. The negative is going to turn it upside down. Now I'm going to pull out that 2, which makes this turn into pi over 4. And so it's upside down. It's got an amplitude of 3. It's been compressed. My period is going to be 2 pi divided by this 2 sitting in front there. So it's going to be pi. And remember, this is going to be left by pi over 4. So it's going to move it uh, to the left. So we started, well, it was upside down. So it moved it back by pi over 4. So all of this we've seen again in previous videos. So uh, just a quick refresher. Cosine of x plus 3 is going to mean that we just moved it up 3. Remember, that's just a vertical shift. And so here's my midline now. It's at 3. Okay, what are the amplitude and period of this function? If you want to pause it and give it a shot. But the amplitude here is 3. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. The period here is going to be 2 pi, and you divide it by that 3 pi that's sitting right there. And you get 2 thirds. Okay, so they're going to add on here throwing some key points to help you graph this. I wouldn't really need you to do that. So what we've got here, I've got an amplitude of 4. I know it's a cosine graph that's turned upside down. And my period is going to be 2 pi divided by what's in front of the x. So it's going to be 2. So they've gone ahead and plotted some points here, which is fine. I mean, it's not necessary, but if you just reason your way through here, pi times 0. So you've got cosine of 0 is 1. That's how they got the negative 4, etc., etc., etc. Just pick some points, graph them. 
but we could have graphed this too. We would have known that a cosine function normally starts at the top, but it's turned upside down, so it's starting at the bottom at 4. It does one whole cycle by the time it gets through the period. So the period is 2, so it would go up and down, and it would stop at 2. Okay, so my amplitude here is 3. My period is going to be 2 pi divided by 3. And so if we wanted to do this, so a sine function starts here, starts here, is going to go up to 3, all the way down to 3, as it it's going to complete an entire period by the time we get to 2 pi over 3. So I wouldn't need you to graph this with the points, but I don't know if I have them here. So, But if you chose some points over here, you put in 0, sine of 0 is 0. You put in pi over 6, uh, why did they pick that all? So that the 3 and the 6 would cancel down to be pi over 2. They're just using some clever choices so that we get the, the, the easy trig functions. So do you see what I mean? If you do 3 sine, 3 times pi over 6 would turn that into 3 sine of pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 1, so that's how they got to 3, etc. Give us some points. But so they don't even plot them on this picture. Just notice that it looks just like mine, that it finishes by 2 pi over 3. So I don't really need the points, but in this section they're asking. Okay, that was all review. Now, what we're going to do here is begin to make some models where we're trying to find a trig function that defines this behavior. And temperatures are going to vary um, in a sinusoidal kind of way as a curve. And so um, I hadn't done this before, but what they're doing here is pretty clever. So we've got a bunch of temperatures. And the first thing we're going to ask is, well, what would our amplitude be? Well, what we're going to do isn't the amplitude where you, you go from the highest point to the lowest point, And the amplitude is half of that, right? So if you have a curve here, the amplitude is that half the distance from the middle up to the top. So a way to find it would be take the largest temperature, 69. Take the smallest temperature. That would be the distance from here all the way to there. But let's cut it in half so that we have it as an amplitude. So that's what we've done. Now, let's find the period. Well, it's always 2 pi, and this data is covering 12 months, so we could divide that by 12. This whole cycle is going to repeat again the following year. So we get pi over 6 for um, our period. And let's see, uh, vertical shift. So yeah, this is clever. This is going to be the midline. So if you think about the highest value and the lowest value, if you average those, isn't that the middle of the graph? And so if we take the two, the highest value and the, and the largest value, and we average them, what we're getting here is the middle of the graph or our midline, which is another way of saying where the vertical shift would be. So, so far we have this. We have our amplitude here. We always put that value for b right in front of x. And now we're going to look for c. Now there, they have this not in that factored form that tells us the shift, but in order to do this, this is actually easier here. So, you know, I normally do it like this when I graph it. Pi over 6, x minus whatever. And, and that's better for graphing, but to do this model here, it, it, if you can maybe see what would obviously make it harder my way, but this would be easier to just call it this unknown c. And here's our midline. So all we're going to do here is we're going to solve for this. Uh, we're going to take any particular value of x and y so that we get this down to just one I don't know, which is just the c. Okay, so we've picked a value for x and y off our chart. I guess this is January, and here's the temperature. So we crunch all this down. We can do all this math. So just basic guys, we're setting that to the other side, dividing both sides by 13.3 gets us here. Okay, now, so we're going to have to do inverse sine. When is the sine function equal to negative 1? Well, that happens at negative pi over 2. So here's what we've got. Whatever this is has an angle that equals negative pi over 2. So when does sine equal negative 1? So we're inverse signing it, and we're getting that whatever this angle is, whatever this angle is, it's equal to negative pi over 2. So it's ever in there equals negative pi over 2. Solve that for C, and we get our horizontal shift. Okay, um, you know what, there's a little bit, one more thing I forgot. So we're kind of guessing like what sine function to use. Sine and cosine both make a curve. And so what they noticed here was that as you look at the data, we are going from low temperatures up to warmer temperatures. 
So they said this must have some kind of shift. This isn't starting. So a sine function would start here and go up and down. Cosine function would start at the top. So they kind of reason their way through that they were going to use. They could have used a sine or cosine function, but they just decided on a sine. But they decided that this is not starting the way we would have expected a sine or a cosine function to start. So it must have had some kind of shift. And that's why we had to search for it. OK, so let me give you another set of data here. Um, so temperatures here are oscillating uh, during the day. And so we're going to play the same game. Yeah, so we're calling noon zero. And this is inches of snow or something. I haven't even read it. Uh, oh, it's the distance of this clock or something. Anyway, here's the data that I need. I've got my time, hour three, hour six, hour nine, inches apart from whatever. And we're going to play the same game. So to find the amplitude, we're going to take the largest number minus the smallest number and average it. Or divide by 2, I should say. We get 24. There's my amplitude. OK, now the clock is repeating every 12 hours. We get the same numbers. Keep repeating. So we're taking 2, by, two pi divided by 12. Here is my period. OK, now what about a vertical shift? Well, we're going to take the largest number and the smallest number, divide by 2. And then that's our new midline. Now, this is what I meant on the last one. They're reasoning their way through this to say that, OK, well, um, that the, the inches are starting low, they're going up, and they're coming back down. So this is following the pattern of an upside down cosine. So like it's already at the amplitude. It's going up, coming down. That's a cosine function, but one that's been turned upside down. Normally, we start at the top, and we go down with a cosine. Well, we're down, and we go up. So we could think of this as a cosine function turned upside down. There's my amplitude. There's the b that I found. So we found b back here by dividing the 2 pi divided by the 12. And then lastly, we've got the vertical shift because we reasoned out our midline. OK, so we've got some more data here about uh, tides varying between 7 and 15 feet at height. So we're going to find our amplitude again. So we're going to take the largest height. Tide goes up to 15 and down to 7. We're going to subtract those, divide by 2. And then it repeats itself every 12 hours. So this is going to be how we find our period here. 2 pi divided by the b. It's pi over 6. Now. We, let's see, OK, we're doing our midline. So we've got 15 plus 7 divided by 2. That's where we would find our midline, which is also the same thing as our vertical shift. And so we've got it. We've got our amplitude here. Oh, uh, do we have? So here's what they noticed about the data. It's starting at the amplitude. It's coming down and coming back up. So that looks like a cosine function. So we set on a cosine function with an amplitude of 4. Um, that's a little weird how they've got this. I would have put the T inside of here. But here we've got our, our value for B. And we've got our midline, our vertical shift. OK, so let's see what we've got. We've got temperatures here varying between 24 and 32. So if we want to find our amplitude, we're going to just subtract those two things and divide by 2. Now, it's absolute value, but. That's kind of obvious. So we got six, seven, eight. So we've got four is going to be our amplitude. Um, oh, I picked the wrong numbers. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so our temperatures are going between 40 and 24. So 40 and 24 divided by 2. We've got 16, so our amplitude is going to be 8. Um, OK, so this is a little bit confusing here. But they're actually saying approximately the time when the temperature re reaches the freezing point. So what we're doing is we're oscillating above a midline, which is the freezing point, which is 32 degrees. So this is how we're oscillating. And um, I don't know. Hold on. They don't have a lot here to go by. Oh, uh, daily temperature. OK, so I, I didn't remember how they did this. So the period here, we're going to have 2 pi, and then there's 24 hours in a day. So the, the temperature is changing every hour. So we've got 2 pi divided by the 24 is our period, which is going to be the pi over 12, which is where they get this. 
and they settled on a sine function. I'm not sure how they settled on it going up. I'm not sure how they settled on it going, why it went up instead of down. But they've settled on a sine function that doesn't have a shift. And so here we go. We've got our amplitude. We've settled on the sine function for mysterious reasons. I don't know if they mean when they say sinusoidal, I don't know if they mean a sine function there. And we've got our value for B that goes in front of our, I don't know. And we settled on 32 because that's going to be our midline. We're checking to see how this varies around the freezing point. Okay, so we want to talk about this in terms of blood pressure, and there's not a lot to this question. So what we do here is what they're getting at. Let's find the period. The period is 2 pi divided by whatever is in front of our I don't know. So that's 160 pi. Now, if you divide that down, you're going to get 1 over 80. So our period is 1 over 80, and the question here, uh, blood pressure is measured, they want it in terms of the frequency. Well, we have our period here. Period and frequency have an inverse relationship. So if the period is 1 over 80, the frequency is going to be 80 over 1 or just 80. Okay, so here's my frequency, here's my period, and um, what else do I got? Just graphed here, yeah. So here's my midline, it's at 100. I've got an amplitude going up to 20, down, up 20, down 20. And then we found the period by dividing. So this thing repeats every one. So we go up, we go down. This would be 1 over 80. Okay, so some of that's review. I think finding the models isn't too terribly hard. Again, it's pretty difficult on the worksheet, but uh, hopefully this will get you started.